The Benefits of Hindsight by Girl in Pink 44. This is the sequel to Wish We Could Turn Back Time. Chapter 1. Tony Stark Has a Heart. Palladium. Noun. 1. A silver-white, ductile, malleable, metallic element that is used especially in electrical contexts, such as a catalyst and an alloys. A chemical element with a symbol PD and an atomic number of 46. It is a rare and lustrous silver-white metal discovered in 1903 by the English chemist William Hyde Wollaston. Something that affords effectual protection or security. Safeguard. The last time Tony Stark designed an element, he did so with very little fanfare. Sure, there had been journal articles and interviews with science magazines, but on a personal level, he sat back and enjoyed the moment before launching headfirst into yet another fight. This one, partly of his own making. And partly Howard's fault, but he wasn't inclined to pick the scab over that wound at the moment. It had just been him and Jarvis, as they made one of the largest discoveries of the 21st century. A new element, and with it, endless possibilities. This time, it was different. Rhodey was helping. Turns out Ben was a handy mechanic as well. And of course, there were two eager kids. One of which could literally lift a bus. Peter, pop that down! Tony called over to where Peter was lifting over a hundred pounds of metal. Luckily, he had disabled the security cameras for this warehouse-sized room. Last time he had been sequestered in the house. This time, he was taking advantage of all his resources. And that included building the needed particle accelerator at Stark Industries. Maybe he'd build one in New York when they built the tower. He could really find more excuses to play with it. Maybe he should have. While there were benefits to hindsight, it left you plagued with doubts too. But Dad! Peter sat it down with a huff that fit a teenager, more than the barely out of toddlerhood boy. I want to help discover an element! And you will, but try not to give away your super strength, would you? Go over the calculations with your brother. Tony nodded to where Harley was poring over calculations, blueprints, and more at a series of drafting tables that took up one corner of the room. Yes, he had everything memorised, but this was a teaching moment for the boys. Around this time last time, he had been obsessed with the idea of what legacy he was leaving behind. And this time around, he actually had one. He wasn't sure what was more terrifying if he was honest. This needs to be level all around, right? Ben looked up from where he was securing the last pieces of the accelerator. He'd talked the man into a job at his production department. It let Ben work with his hands, which he admitted he'd rather do than watch security monitors all day. But if his skills were needed, he'd step up. And they may someday. Or oh, hiding him away in production may keep him alive to see Peter graduate high school. If there was anything he could do to prevent Ben's death this time around, he'd do it. But subtly, because Ben didn't want a fuss made around it when there was half of the universe at stake. Yes. Ben nodded, getting out the tools to check. Honey bear, how goes set up and the final supply check? Well, looking good, Tony. Rody grinned from his station near Harley and Peter. Everything is in place, and we've got the examination room set up next door to replace the core as soon as it's set. Normally, the footsteps that entered the room would be accompanied by the click-click of high heels, but these days, Peppa Potts was favouring flats. Already in her second trimester, she was showing. The publicity of announcing that Peppa was pregnant with his child wasn't pretty. Unfortunately, that was a downside of doing this out of order last time. Last time, they had been in a publicised relationship for a year and were engaged. This time, it seemed to come out of nowhere and the public went into a frenzy. It didn't help that this was less than six weeks since Harley and Peter had been shoved into the spotlight thanks to Stain. Hello, Miss Potts. Tony grinned at the love of his life. Hello, Mr. Stark. How are things going here? She came over and kissed his cheek. As she pulled away, he did the same. 
Both Harley and Peter groaned at the PDA, and Tony juggled. While they often acted like the teenagers they had once been, sometimes they took advantage of their new ages to act so. Like at any time Tony and Peppa shared any kind of public bit of affection, it had been cute at first, but now no comments are needed from the peanut gallery over there. How are those calculations going? We're done, mechanic, Harley grinned. Jarvis even checked. And it's so. Uh, the AI's voice rang out over the speakers. You are safe to proceed. Walking over, Tony checked the calculations himself and nodded his approval. Excellent job, boys. Are we ready to discover an element? Both eagerly nodded and Pepper excused herself. Tony didn't want her in a room while the accelerator fired up. Not while pregnant. Safety gear, bambinos. Both boys went and got their safety goggles while Tony and the other adults fetched theirs. Walking around the accelerator, Tony did a last check. Out of everyone in the room, he had been the only one to mess with this for any amount of time. Which could have been bad. He really needed to delegate more and to make sure that people knew what he was up to. Maybe if he had talked more, the civil war wouldn't have happened. After all, he had known about the Accords for months. He had assumed the team had been keeping up as well. That had certainly bitten him in the ass. Satisfied with his final checks, he headed over to where his station was. All right, Jay, let's do this. Turning on the accelerator. To be honest, it was a hair less dramatic this time around. Maybe it was the utter lack of desperation compared to the previous time. Or maybe it was true because he had done this before. But the accelerator began firing. One thing different about this compared to the first time was that he had had more room to work with. Instead of cramming this in his workshop, he had been able to make a bigger and proper one, which meant he was able to avoid thousands of property damage he had acquired last time. Pepper had been especially happy about that. It lit up and both boys let out exclaims of happiness. Harley favoured mechanical engineering and loved the building part of it. But he was aware that while Peter enjoyed it, he loved chemistry. Creating a new element, even though it had been done from their perspective, was like Christmas to him. After a few minutes, he had the new element set up in a way that he could insert it into a new core. Grabbing the core from his workbench, he went over and examined it. It glowed the familiar blue, and Tony felt a wave of nostalgia hit. He'd done it and long before the signs of heavy metal poisoning showed. But for the sake of being thorough, he looked at the ceiling. Joe examined this and confirmed that it will be a suitable replacement for the palladium. There was quiet for a moment. Everyone in the room gathered around to look at the new element sitting in front of them. The new element will replace the palladium without damaging your health. Congratulations on creating a new element. With the official confirmation, both boys burst into cheers and Tony slid the core into the new reactor. It lit up, and Tony knew that it was time to fix this. But first, he could take a second to celebrate with his boys. Six hours later, both boys were fast asleep, and all of the six adults were gathered around with their drinks of choice. For tonight, Tony was drinking apple juice in a tumbler that he would have used for scotch. Everyone gathered around on the couches, and Tony smiled at his family. There wasn't anyone left alive who was related to him by blood, minus his precious daughter whom his wife was carrying. But he discovered in the years that never were, the family went much deeper than blood. Now that we're all here, I figured it was a good idea to hold a meeting to do a check on the progress made before the boys start school in three weeks. The adults all nodded. Ned is flying in in three days to be there for Peter's birthday. We're doing Disneyland again on Sunday. And then you had something in mind for his birthday? May eyed the man curiously. Tony grinned at the mention of his mystery plans. He hadn't told anyone about it for fear of super ears hearing and the surprise being ruined. Trust me, they'll love it. Happy, how goes the clean sweep? With the benefits of hindsight, I knew where to look for moles and problems. We have made significant progress in cleaning house. 
on a much faster timetable. On the legal side, I've delivered my findings to your lawyers. When applicable, they're fighting civil suits and working prosecutors if criminal charges apply. Tony nodded. Stone's trial is going to be in Washington, D.C. Considering Stark Industries' ties to the military, they won the bidding war. This could take weeks. I'm planning to be based in New York by then, and I can fly down when I need it. The group nodded. Rose, how goes packing? We're almost ready to move. The kids are excited. Harley's excited to live near you. Tony grinned. I can't wait to have both of them close. Papa, happy covered the clean-up of SI. How is the rest? Ground broke on the tower last week. It will still be two years before we can occupy it, but we will be ready earlier than last time. Where are we on Thanos? There's a limit to what I can do before the Battle of New York. I'm scheduled to run into at least two, if not three, of the original Avengers. And then there's the Expo. Please, tell me you're going to make sure that disaster doesn't happen again? May groaned. Trust me, I plan to stop the bots and Vanko. Hammer is... a pest, but I'll new to him too if I need to. Tony grinned. But the Expo is important. Last time... Last time was the dream of a dying man to leave a legacy. This time, it's about preparing for the future. I plan to expand on what I did last time. Open a junior section where budding minds can show off. One thing I've learned in the last five months is how many things I missed that could have helped. Speaking of, how are our new allies? They're doing great. About to start a new school year. Stark Industries donated a lot of technology to the school to make sure they're well equipped, Pepper nodded. It also helped us to come out as siding with the mutants. We're hoping that it helps ease things when enhanced come into play. As Tony mentioned, the Expo is set to launch on Memorial Day weekend next year, and go for a year. We will officially announce it in October, and open up the registration process for companies to have booths, or present on one of three stages. There are two stones on Earth. What are our plans for them? Rody spoke up. We are leaving them where they are for now. The Time Stone has a role to play down the road, and will be needed. S.H.I.E.L.D. already has the Space Stone, which will help set up the events of New York into play. It's a fixed point. It turns Thanos' attention to us. It helps us in the end. What about the Avengers? Happy asked. Are you going to join them? Tony let out a sigh. I don't know. It's not like I'm going to sit on the sidelines when people need me. Iron Man is more popular than he was last time. But things won't be the way they were last time. While for them it hasn't happened, for me, it has. It's complicated. Avengers? You guys have mentioned them a few times. Ben chimed in for the first time in the meeting. For being the only one who didn't remember, he was taking all of this rather well. The Earth's Mightiest Heroes There was an idea called the Avengers Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if they could become something more. To see if they could work together when we needed them to. To fight the battles that we never could. Tony remembered the speech that had been given that day, the first time they had been needed. It started as six of us, grew to more, less, for long as you waited year to year. There was a fight, and then the world ended, and here we are. Ben took a sip of his coffee. And now that we're back, all of those events will happen again. Exactly. Now, for the next year, the focus is the Expo. I've got a few more missions to run to clean out the Ten Rings, Stain's Trial, and, of course, Morgan. I'm due around Christmas. I plan to take maternity leave until the end of March, and then launch into the preparation for the Expo. Rose will help me take care of Morgan, and we will make this work. And, of course, our wedding, which will be at the end of Pepper's maternity leave. Tony grinned, eyeing the ring on Pepper's finger. Once the Expo is in place, there isn't much to do until we prepare for New York. Line break. Three boys stood in a line, Tony's cars behind them in the workshop. In front of them was a box of supplies. 
Tools lay on the tables, and parts lay in piles near the door. Tony stood in front of the three, grinning. Rody and Ben stood behind him. Over the summer, before everything went wrong, I was going to bring Holly to New York. I'm sure the three of you would have given me plenty of grey hairs. Give us time, mechanic, Harley grinned. I'm well aware, but don't do not. Tony shook his head. One of the things we were going to do was restore a car. Now, you three are a little young for that, and are currently too short to drive most go-karts. That earned him a round of sulking. All three boys found it hard to be that young again. While it was fun sometimes to wag that age and run around, all three of them had been close to adulthood. And now they were far from it once again. Considering that problem, I came up with a fun solution, and that is what we are working on today. Tony waved at all the boxes. Today, you three will each assemble an RFCV. Three sets of eyes lit up and they all eyed the boxes. Harley took a step, but Tony held up his hand. There are rules. Most importantly, no explosives. This is not the time to figure out how to create red, blue or green shells. Harley's shoulders dropped. Peter let out a small, disappointed sigh. Second, you will have one of us three check over your work when you're done. We will then take the cars to a course that I have set up for a race. You have three hours to assemble your car. A timer appeared on a nearby screen. Begin. Four hours later found them on the lawn outside the mansion. Tony had set up a course that went about half a mile. Ben had helped him to create it, basing it on ideas he had had for Peter. It was time for the race to begin. All three boys sat their cars down and got into position. Off to the side, the rest of the team sat in chairs, cheering on the group. Tony stood at the finish line, eyeing the boys. Joe, tell them to get ready. The message was relayed. He watched through a video feed as all three boys sat their cars on the track. Give them a countdown, Joe. Tony watched as the boys grew more determined before three cars raced towards him. While he was sure Jarvis would give him the winner, he wanted to watch this himself. Harley had made a car with... Were those rocket boosters? Tony hadn't had a chance to look at his car. Rudy had done the final check there. Sure enough, he was using the boosts in speed. Probably inspired by Mario Kart's stars to take the early lead. Peter, on the other hand, had the smallest car. Probably the idea of it being the most agile in case Tony planted obstacles. Which he had. Tony had checked that car over, leaving Ben with Ned's. Ned was in the middle, size-wise, but he'd used the most of his time to code the computer. He'd already been ready to hire the kid when he got out of school, but when the car shot out at an EMP boost localised to take out Harley's booster, Tony solidified that thought. In the meantime, he'd give the kid a challenge or two. He'd be a force to be reckoned with. Having lost his speed boost, Harley fell behind. They were over halfway through the course now, and Ned had taken the lead. Peter fell back into last place as they rounded an obstacle. Doing the math in his head, he realised Peter's plan and laughed. Sure enough, Harley and Ned's cars crashed into each other, not being able to fit around the obstacle that Tony had set up side by side. Peter's car came along and drove up on the wall, using a modified of his web's polymer. Zipping around them, he crossed the finish line and cheered. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this one. So yes, I'm doing the sequel now. Whoop, 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 whoop. And I have given Harley and his mum as good of an impression of southern accents as I can, since I now realised I can somewhat do that. To an extent. Let's not say I'm an expert here. I'm not from America and I'm not an impressionist. But I wanted to give it a go. Anyway, I really like the idea of them all being together as a family when he makes the um, Starganium. I love that. And I really like that mention at the end when he thinks about hiring Ned and just like, yep, I'm hiring this kid. Because as much as we all love Ned, he is kind of left behind in Peter's bond with Tony a bit. So I love that. Sorry about that noise, by the way. There's something going on in my building. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, girls and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.